The world is ending tomorrow. Is it fact or opinion? Tandeka makes a statement to Sipo. Sipo isn't sure whether what Tandeka says is true or false, so asks how she knows. Tandeka can back up her statement by referring to employment contract that states lunches 30 minutes long. A fact is therefore something that can be proven either true or false. Sipo likes Mercedes-Benz. He tells Tandeka that they are the best cars on the market. Sipo has no way of backing up his statement. This is therefore an opinion. An opinion is an expression of how a person feels about a particular matter and or believes to be true. One of the things that is used to make someone believe something is to omit something of importance intentionally. In a retail store, you'll find a sticker on an item which says save 20 Rand. Immediately your eyes on the save. If you read further, in very small print, it says buy two or three to save the 20 Rand. This is not necessarily a mission, but manipulative by placing the save big and bold to grab the attention of the buyer. Or use slogans and catchy phrases like McDonald's does. I'm loving it. You'll be singing I'm loving it all day and you go and buy McDonald's. Or Acrofresh that tells you that the, that's the best toothpaste and it has all the ingredients to keep your mouth and teeth hygienically clean. What they don't say is how much it costs. People use different techniques to manipulate their use of language to distort reality. Advertisements, media, political speeches are all examples of areas that use text to distort reality. Digital media advertising, on the other hand, typically social media, don't tell us about the dangers of using technology and the cyber predators, the addiction to technological devices and other health ailments that come with using technological devices and the information we find on them. Another example of distortion and or manipulation is insurance companies. They often offer car hire services, but omit to tell you that car hire is only available in the event of an accident. Writers use language structures and features to influence what is read and thought about, as we saw in the previous examples. Often media slogans, as an example, would use words, language symbols, pictures and a tone that makes you want to buy the product. They'll maybe use the words like it is best for you rather than you must buy it. The pitch and volume of your voice is called intonation when we speak words. Verbal communication we can hear with our ears and make a decision on whether it's necessary to react in whatever way necessary. Nonverbal communication is noticed a lot more than verbal communication. Our body language, eyes, facial expressions, hand gestures. Notice the little man with his arm in the air on the right. He's signaling something. It could be a wave, he's pointing at something, but his facial expression is definitely telling us he's upset or just not loving life right now. When communicating verbally to a specific audience, you need to be aware of the following. Attentive, maintain eye contact, courteous, show respect and don't interrupt. Interpret, recognize intended message. Paraphrase, summarize your understanding. And then inquire, follow up questions and or communicate your understanding to make sure you understand the message. You may encounter any one of the following four communication forms. Personal communication, which is self-explanatory. This is when you're communicating with yourself or with one or two other people. Mass communication, when you're communicating or talking to a lot of people at the same time. And then we get communication that happens in the workplace. This is called organizational communication. And then intercultural, which can be personal, mass, or organizational, but takes cultural differences into consideration. Barriers to communication. Physical barriers refers to someone who is hard of hearing or deaf and or visually impaired or blind. 
cultural when people communicating are not familiar and or have little knowledge of the language being spoken, insensitive or poor choice of language, and a lack of intercultural understanding. Organisational barriers happen where terminology that's used in the workplace is not familiar with the audience. Linguistics, someone who has studied in the science of a language would have trouble communicating with someone that has layman language abilities. Noise as distraction. This may not be a physical noise and or background noise, but other distractions like worries, stress, excitement. When speaking to someone who is worried, stressed and or excited may be distracted by the underlying thoughts. The message may then be misinterpreted and or misheard. Ever just told your friend how wonderful your holiday was and they were looking at you but simply didn't react or asked you to repeat? Phew, then you've got to repeat the whole story again. This is a typical example of noise as distraction. And that's a wrap for lesson four. You're going to be a good communicator in no time. Let's take a look at what we've learned. Facts are things that can be proven to be true. Opinion is the thought or belief of the individual. Media, politicians and organisations use manipulative text to catch our attention. Verbal communication can be heard and non-verbal can only be seen. Different mediums of communication take place on a daily basis. Be aware of barriers to communication to ensure you communicate through and around them.